Greetings and welcome as we gather on your phone, pad, or TV to share God's Word and our faith. I'm Pastor Mark Bauer, member of Trinity Lutheran in Moulton. Many of you know me as the retired pastor of St. Mark's Lutheran. Please watch your church website, myfelc.org, and emails from the congregation for details about worship and ways to care for each other in the coming weeks. Your leadership has included links to a host of resources for the coming days. Please read and make use of the resources there. Please do not feel alone in this time of crisis. Call the church office. Your office secretary, Hillary, is working from home and can help you by linking you to those who can be of assistance. We continue with our time of worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We share a time of confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts, and anoint us with your Spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading appointed for this coming Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Lent, comes from the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, verses 1 to 13, and I only read a portion of those verses. Samuel anointed David, even though he was the eighth oldest son of Jesse and did not match his brothers in height or other physical characteristics. With the anointing came endowment with the Spirit of the Lord, designating David as the Lord's chosen successor to Saul. The reading. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all of your sons here? 
And he said, oh, there remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily on David from that day forward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 to 41. And again, I read a portion of the verses. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus heals a man born blind, provoking a hostile reaction that he regards as spiritual blindness to the things of God. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind so that God's word might be revealed in him. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed, and came back able to see. Now for the second time, the Pharisees called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God! We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I don't know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Again, the man who was blind said, If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. The Pharisees answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped Jesus. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Peace be with you. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. I cannot imagine how unsettling these past weeks have been for you personally and as a congregation. First of all, to hear that your beloved pastor, Neil, is going to retire so that he can spend more time with his children and grandchildren and take care of his wife, Sandy. And then to hear of the coronavirus and all of the changes in lifestyle that we have had to face. My heart goes out to you as members of First English, as members of the Wapakoneta community, as we take a look at what to do next, how to be the people of God 
in this congregation, in this community, in the church. The Lord is offering us peace in John 14, 27, and that is so important to us now. This past Tuesday, pastors from the Southwest Conference met in a Zoom call, and we talked about our current congregation and community settings and how we can help people respond to our situation. We read from Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. With all the new information, all the misinformation, all the changes in our lifestyle, it's easy to fret, to become angry about what is going on. Some of you have to stay home because, like me, you're over 65. Some of you have to figure out what to do with your kids because they're home from school and you still have a job. Some of you are concerned for your aging parents or grandparents. Some are concerned for your younger children or grandchildren. I'm currently raising a sixth and a ninth grader. I'm concerned about them and they're concerned about me. Sometimes you may have to worry about your neighbors, how those who can't get out are doing. And that fretting and that anger can overpower us. Pastor Melody Hagen of Trinity Moulton shared in her last sermon last weekend about hope. Her friend wrote a book that says hope has two children, one named Anger and one named courage. Together, anger and courage make up hope. And that's what we need. As we look at the constantly changing situation around us, we need to see how anger can help us look carefully at the world and how courage can help us do what needs to be done. Anger and courage together bring hope. You've heard all the recommendations about hand washing and taking care of your neighbors. Please follow those guidelines as best you can. I know I'm planning on staying home. Yes, I drove to the church on Friday, so there's just four of us here, so we could record this message. Thinking about our lessons for today, I invite you to take some time to read them on your own. Look up the full reading of 1 Samuel 16. It talks about Samuel grieving over the Lord. The Lord had taken away the blessing from Saul as king of Israel. What was Samuel going to do? There was a time when my grandson was three. He walked around the house just lost. What to do? What to do? What to do? Sounds like Samuel. That sounds like us. What are we going to do now? And what does God say to answer Samuel? He sends him to begin the next chapter in Israel's history. Samuel anoints David as king. It's so easy to dwell on the past or on the present. I and many other parents and grandparents were looking forward to three more months of kids in school. Others were looking for more weeks in Florida. Others were looking for a fun spring break. Others were looking for anything but our current situation. We can dwell in the past or we can see where the Lord is guiding us into the future. What is God calling you to do today and tomorrow? Also take time to look up the full gospel reading for today. John chapter nine. It tells of a blind man who receives his sight and nobody is willing to acknowledge it or understand what it means. Sight 
understanding. That's what we need now. Help in sorting through everything that's going on and make some sense of it. Maybe it's time to turn off some of the news about the coronavirus and take some time to be with your family. Check on your elderly neighbors. Call your loved ones. Pick up necessities that drive up windows. For our family, we can still take a walk down the street just to get out of the house. The Northwestern Ohio Synod pastors and roster leaders also met with Bishop Daniel Bowden via Zoom on Tuesday afternoon to talk about what we can do in the weeks and months ahead. How can we minister to each other in a time when we can't gather in in-person worship? Read through the information your congregation has posted on your website, myfelc.org. There's excellent links and resources. In the meantime, look for happy stories in the midst of crisis. I saw in the news about an 80-year-old who was on quarantine in Italy. She received a knock on her front door. When she opened the door, there was a birthday cake with a candle in it. Nobody standing there, of course. Then the neighbors, out of the balconies around her apartment, sang happy birthday to her through the open windows. Joy in the midst of troubles. Watched the news the other night and the teachers at Allied Elementary recorded a video to the tune of Brady Bunch, telling the kids, we're looking forward to seeing you. No, I won't sing it. But the teacher said, when the virus is finally gone, we'll be back together so we can have some fun. Little friends, be good for your parents and don't drive them nuts. We love you. Watch for God sightings. We've talked about that when we've had a joint VBS together before. God is doing marvelous things. For God doesn't distance himself from us. It's not in God's nature to be distant. The central story of salvation, the incarnation, the coming of Jesus into the world, is all about God entering into our world, not departing from it. I used to serve a church whose name was Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Emmanuel means God is with us. God will not and God does not distance himself from us. God hasn't done this in the past. God is not doing it now. And God will not do it in the future. This is a theme that runs through Scripture. God is near us, not distant. Apostle Paul says this with authority in Romans chapter 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the days and weeks ahead, physical distancing will require us to make sacrifices and find new ways of being connected. But as Paul reminds us, God will be with us no matter what. God bless you as you continue to share the good news, care for your family and friends, keep in touch by phone with those near and far, those who are ill or homebound, and as you care for the needy. I leave you with the per words of Jesus. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Amen.
let us share our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us share in a time of prayer. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. O oh God, you sent your Son, our Savior, as light and love to our world. Thank you. You know we are in some dark days right now and that we need light and love more than ever. Illuminate us. Illuminate our hearts with your love. Enlight our path as we journey through fear. Bring us, O Lord, to health and wholeness. And let us know your will for our lives and ministry. Gracious Lord, be with the people of First English and our community as they journey through these weeks ahead. Be with those who are in leadership in the church, elected leaders, pastors, office staff. Guide, support, and strengthen them as they share in ministry, support one another, and look for ways for us all to be the church, the people of God in these days. Be with Pastor Neil and his family. Show them your love and support in these days. Be with those who are waiting Confirmation Sunday and their First Communion. Show them ways to live out their faith in these days. Be with the ill, especially those that we name in our hearts before you. We think especially of those affected by the seasonal flu and COVID-19. Be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Help them to trust their loved ones to your care and kingdom. Be with emergency personnel, police, fire, rescue, hospital, ER, urgent care, doctors, nurses, support staff, and all those who are providing us the support that we need each day. Oh Lord, we want to work together as the church, even when we can't meet face to face. Help us to know how best to be your people now. Help us to be community. Help us to be your hands, your feet, your voice at this time, and to be a beacon of your light and love to all those in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Amen.